what is up G Crew? I'm Chris G bringing you guys another video and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my hyperlapses. Those of you that don't know what a hyperlapse is, all I'm going to say is you're in for a treat. So without further ado, let's get started. I hope you guys enjoyed that little sequence. Honestly, hyperlapses are my favorite thing to do in editing, even though they're, they're, bleh, they're bleh, can't talk. Even though they are the most tedious things to do, they are definitely well paid off. They're insane. You get camera movements that you won't ever normally get, um, but they do take some time depending on the ways you want to do it. So without further ado, let's get started with it. And uh, yeah, so. First things first is how do you set up for a hyperlapse? Okay, so first things first is you're going to change your settings to manual mode. Reason is, is because you don't need the lighting to be changing on you and then the pictures that you're taking, uh, you're gonna be taking pictures, it's not a video. Um, the pictures that you're gonna be taking, they're gonna be changing due to the lighting if you have it on aperture priority or whatever crazy mumbo jumbo thing you have it on so have it on manual it's the best bet to go for a hyperlapse with that being said following that i would say for the white balance i personally don't have it on manual white balance i just have it on auto canon does a pretty good job of doing it on its own so as you can see those hyperlapses are fine no colors are changing drastically due to the white balance so they changed because i color graded it but yeah um speaking of color grading number two for how to set up, you want to have it on raw photos instead of JPEG. I mean, JPEG is fine, especially if you're just starting out and you have an iPhone or something. Um, yeah, raw is the best bet to go for. That way you have the most flexibility whenever you're trying to color grade it. And when you shoot in raw, it makes the file way bigger. So if you're trying to um, get more of the image onto the screen or the frame, uh, that'll look way better. So shoot in raw if you can at all possible. Yeah, I don't know what to follow with that. Anyway, next thing is a grid. So a grid is useful for whenever you're trying to do a hyperlapse, for example. So a grid is mostly traditionally used to um, follow like the rule of thirds for photography or even videography as well. That way you can get some depth in the image or in the frame. Um, that way you can it makes it easier to follow rules. Sometimes people don't like it because it's in the way of the image. Uh, but for hyperlapse, it's, it's very useful because it's going to allow you to line up your shot very cleanly and easily because whenever you're shooting these hyperlapses, you need a subject, which is usually a structure of a building or a tree or something that's vertical, which leads me to my next subject or my next tip for how to do a hyperlapse is you need a building to, um, to shoot, right? I mean, you could do a person, it's way more difficult that way. You could do whatever you want, whatever you can think of. That'd be pretty dope if you guys can send me some send me some cool little hyperlapses that y'all come up with, but it's pretty hard. So because the building's gonna be in a vertical line, hopefully, um, it's best to take a straight line towards it or away from it or side to side, or you can do like a half circle or a full circle, whatever the case may be. Just keep the subject in frame and try to have similar points of that subject um, in the same spot at all times. It'll make it so much useful for whenever you have to stabilize it. And there's two ways to stabilize it. Um, I'm going to show you guys one way today. And then if you like this video, I'll probably do a part two um, in the future. Lengths you should go. I would probably say that you can go as far as you want away or towards or side to side from the subject. If you're gonna go side to side, I'll say try to do almost like a half circle distance, but like in a straight line if you don't wanna do a half circle, because a half circle is more difficult if you don't have something to guide, um, guide you. So like if a sidewalk is going in a curve, this probably doesn't help because of, in a curve like this, see that's way easier for you to see. If it's going in a curve that way, then go for the half circle, but if you wanna just, Make it simple for yourself, find something that's going straight like a sidewalk that's normally straight and then follow that while you're focused on your subject and it'll make it way easier for you guys. So, but lengthwise, wise, what I'm referring to is how many pictures you should take and how many steps you should take. Um, well, now that we're getting into like the actual picture taking, 
this is where it kind of gets a little fluctuated because it depends on you so if you want the best hyperlapse possible um shoot consistently and shoot for every step or half step or whatever you want two steps but make them every single step the same so what i do is usually um i honestly don't even like calculate my step or anything like that. i just literally take a picture i count like four seconds five seconds um just to keep it consistent for me to take my next shot so i just go like and etc so that's pretty much what i do for my hyperlapses just because if i take a picture take a step take a picture take a step take a picture and etc then the time can fluctuate and the clouds or whatever's moving can move at a different rate and i made this mistake when i went to oregon i had shot a really really dope building and it was a hyperlapse and i was shooting and some lady came up to me and she was like oh what are you doing and i was like oh i'm just taking hyperlapses and she's like what's that and then i showed her like what i had so far and then i was like okay bye and then she left whatever and then I took, I kept following like what I was doing and I go back home or to my friend's house cause you know, he flew me out and I'm editing and I'm like, why is this frame so delayed? Like why did the clouds just jump from there to there? And I was literally talking to the lady for like 10 seconds. It wasn't even anything drastic, but those 10 seconds made a huge difference. So always calculate um, your time between your pictures. How many pictures should you take? I would probably say just keep in mind that 24 pictures will fill up one second so 24 frames a second um i would probably say maybe i mean you could do 40 50 60. I, I honestly go overboard sometimes i shoot 100 depending on the length of the of the distance but uh yeah it's up to you i always come home realizing that i took way too many but you can always fast forward it and shrink it so that way you get all of it as much as you can. That way it fills up the space. But if that's the case, might as well just take two steps or three steps ahead so that way you don't have to do that. Um, but yeah, 24 frames a second, um, that's something to keep in mind. Another thing too is when you shoot, when you're editing hyperlapses, after you've like completed it and you're trying to incorporate it into a video because you don't want to just do a video full of hyperlapses because that has no context at all. I don't, I do not suggest that. But um, if you're trying to like show me your hyperlapse, that's cool too. That's a different thing. But if you're trying to produce your own video and it revolves around hy hyperlapses, at least give it some context. Um, but yeah. Now, what not to do for a hyperlapse. So first things first is don't be inconsistent. Like I was saying earlier, um, that incident with the lady, it made me inconsistent because I stopped my what I was doing at a consistent rate. And I talked to her for a little bit and then she left and then I went back to it. And it just came out bad. It came out really bad because of that huge jump and I could not fix it. So yeah, don't make that same mistake, guys. Another tip for whenever you're shooting hyperlapses is try to, try to think of your point A and your point B. So if you see your structure, it's at point A, you wanna be sure that you you analyze the you analyze where you're gonna be going, your path, and you wanna make sure there's no structures in or I guess obstacles in the way, whether it be trees or another building or sign in the way. Sometimes you can get away with signs being in the way. Um, or trees too if it's just like the trunk or whatever. Um, but like if once leaves start getting in the way, it gets very, very complicated whenever you're trying to stabilize. But yeah, try not to have obstacles in the way and also Think about your point A and point B while you're taking photos. Can you keep that consistent line um, the whole time while you're taking pictures around it? Because as you're taking the pictures, it's going to start getting very complicated whenever you're going um, from your point A to point B and you're shooting it. So yeah, just always keep that in mind. That's something to not do is have something in the way because if you do that, then it makes the warp stabilizer or whatever stabilizer you're using um, in post to fix it so whenever i say post it's referring to whenever you're on the computer after the fact that you recorded or took the pictures so yeah last thing to not do while you're doing a hyperlapse is don't rush so um whenever you're going to be doing a hyperlapse know that it's going to take a lot of time it's going to take a long 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 time um way longer than you're gonna expect because you're gonna take your first picture and you're like, okay, cool. This is where the journey begins because it's gonna be a long journey. So you're gonna take your photo, take your step, take your photo, take your step. 
and make sure it's consistent and if you start to rush you're gonna you're gonna notice it big time so make sure you're getting your frame right make sure you're lining up you know the, the line on the grid sometimes what I do is um, I used to do like the diagonal one just so that I can know the exact point but then I just realized a six by four grid I think it's that one I hope I hope I'm not wrong um, it has like the line in the middle and then the line going horizontal as well but yeah don't rush if you rush you're gonna regret it and you're gonna, you're gonna be almost done and you're like dang I could have I could have taken my time and that's when you realize that you're like dang I finally took in my time or I could have gone slower in between shots that's why I always discipline myself to take at least five seconds in between the shots because five seconds is when you notice like clouds moving or five seconds and up so yeah let's get to the actual editing part of the video um, that was all just to set up the hyperlapse so once you've got it gathered all your clips and all your stuff now we can actually start editing it on post so before we actually get started I'm gonna teach you guys how to like import it on into Lightroom and then from Lightroom to uh, Premiere and if you don't have Lightroom then and you only have Premiere Pro then um, I would suggest you shoot in JPEG don't shoot in RAW because in, in RAW you won't be able to um, you won't be able to import the clips it, it, it's like it doesn't let you for some reason but yeah make sure you shoot in JPEG if you're gonna do that so without further ado let's get started onto Lightroom all right so first things first is importing the photos so what you're gonna want to do is I already have my photos here as you can see these are all the hyperlapses that I've done um, plenty of hyperlapses and so what I've done is these are time lapses as well different hyperlapses that I've done for the future so for a future video um, I kind of already do these ahead of time that way it doesn't take so long um, but yeah so first things first guys what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit import and then you're gonna go to whatever folder you have your photos so missions just so I know and then I made two separate folders do this um, ahead of time as well I forgot to mention so whenever you took your pictures on your camera or on your phone make a folder on your computer or laptop wherever you're editing and label it um, I guess one JPEG or something or one raw and then make another folder called um, JPEG so that way I'll, it'll make sense later but do that before you do all this crazy mumbo jumbo. I forgot to mention, I'm sorry. So, um, once you have your folder with your raw photos, right? So this is what it looked like. What you're gonna do is you're gonna check all of them. And then what you're gonna do is hit import right here. You can't really see it because I don't have Windows. After like two years of having my computer and I haven't installed Windows the proper way, I have it for free. Don't mind me. Anyway. So you're gonna hit import here and then it'll put all the photos into Lightroom. And um, yeah, so then I'm just gonna hit cancel just cause I already have them all in here. It's not gonna let me cause it's already in here. And so here are all the photos, right? And then you're already in the library panel. So then you're gonna switch over to the develop. That way you can actually mess with the photos. And this is where I was telling you guys um, to shoot in raw because you have the most flexibility. So. Here's all this right here, and um, if you want to see the before and after, that's what it looked like before. So yes, I changed it very dramatically, and if I wanted to, I can you know change the colors or whatever. And if you don't know how to color grade, guys, I'll make another video for that on Lightroom or um, or Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects. So you let me know what color grading I should I guess teach on first. So yeah. Just a quick overview though, here's the lighting situation, I'm going to go kind of fast on this. Um, I kind of want to bring up the shadows just so that way you can see the most in the photos. I feel like when you're doing clarity into a video for a hyperlapse, it gives it more of that surreal look. Um, normally you don't see the clarity in a video as well as you do a picture. And since you're making this picture into a video, it kind of enhances that surreal look. So. Um, here are the hue and saturation. So this is, I know I'm kind of scrolling kind of fast, but these are the lighting stuff and the color white balance is right here with the temperature and tint tool. Again, this is like the effects tool kind of. And then you come down here where it says HSL color, this is hue, saturation, and lighting uh, or luminance. Uh, so what you can do is you can mess with the greens and you'll notice it'll like change the greens a little bit and then the yellows as well. So you'll notice it gives it that that vibe, you know, that dope vibe. So I'm actually 
gonna turn it green. And then I'm gonna make this guy a little bit more blue. I'm gonna saturate it. And that looks pretty juicy, I'm not gonna lie. So notice, I'm sorry, I know I'm like scatterbrained right now. Um, notice the scroll bar is like in the middle and I chose a frame that's more so in the middle of the hyperlapse. So you don't usually wanna pick one towards the end and you don't usually wanna pick one towards the beginning. Um, middle is probably the best bet to go for. That way you can um, edit as much um, that way it like gets an overview of both the beginning and the end. So yeah, so once you've done that, all you can do is hit Control A on your keyboard or Command A on your Mac um, for Mac users. Um, by the way, I might be switching to Apple because I want to edit on a laptop. I'm tired of sitting on a desktop and then my family is downstairs. And I want to edit downstairs, watching a movie with them, having a good time, eating some popcorn. Probably won't eat popcorn while I'm editing because I don't want to get my keys on this stuff but yeah anyway back to what we we're doing I got distracted I'm sorry so after you hit uh, control a or command a um, you'll notice this uh, sync button popped up so all you gotta do is hit sync and then you're gonna hit synchronize and then what it's gonna do is it can make magic it's gonna put the effects that you just did on that one onto all of the pictures you just took and it makes life so so easy so if you look right here I'm gonna go to the very end um, and that's what that is. So you'll notice it's kind of like overblown, um, blown out with the highlights and stuff. And if you come over here as well, um, again, I wasn't really trying to make a good edit for the photo, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's fine. It's not like crazy bad. And I would argue that it's pretty decent. So that's that. So now how do we get it on to Premiere so that we can actually put it in the video? Well, all we have to do now is go back to library and then you're gonna hit export right here. And you're gonna export it. Um, and then, yeah. Whoa, voice crack. Uh, so you're gonna export it here, specific folder. And then this is why I said make a folder for JPEG. So that way you can just select it. So you'll see here where it says folder. Um, this is for an, another, this is actually for a time lapse I did earlier, uh, earlier in the year. Um, but you just go wherever you, you have your thing in Mobob. For me, it's where I have admissions. I labeled everything. I'm like very picky on like organizing everything on my computer because I don't want it to be a mess. And I hate it when somebody just has everything on their desktop and it's just like, dude, clean your stuff. Like it looks, ah, Moises, I'm talking to you. All right, so JPEG here and then you just import it there. So I'm not gonna actually do it just because I already have my own version of my color grade that I think I like. So uh, everything else you don't really need to worry about. Um, you can have it to where it renames your um, pictures in order in a sequence. So the way you do that, well, I guess you can do file name and then sequence. So what that's going to do is it's going to, it's going to remember the number it is, but now it's going to put them in order for you. So if you're taking your hyperlapses and you take a picture and you look at it and you're like, oh no, I don't like it. And you delete it and then you take a picture again. And let's say that was your 66th photo, and then you delete it, and then you take your another one, and then you're on your 67th. Well, it's gonna make it 68 instead of 67 because you deleted it or something. My math's a little off there, but it's gonna skip a number. Long story short, and that's gonna mess up the sequence of whenever you're importing it onto Light, uh, onto um, Adobe Premiere. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit File Sequence, File Name Sequence, sorry. And then what that's gonna do is gonna it's gonna renumber your pictures but it's gonna keep it in the same order so instead of it being 87 88 89 it's gonna start from one two three four etc to however many you took so that's that um, and then all you gotta do is hit export I'm not gonna export like I said um, it already has all of these selected so yeah I'm gonna hit cancel and once you've exported it into your folder now we can take it to Adobe Premiere Pro so now let's go to that so as you can see I already have my sequence that I did that y'all saw earlier um, came out pretty decent so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that from scratch so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open a new sequence all right so let's make a new sequence all you gotta do is go to new item or for you guys you don't really need to do that all you have to do is skip this step so just hold on I'll tell you where you can start so obviously you're gonna open up your Premiere Pro and then you're gonna open up a new project or whatever and then you should be left with a blank screen like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna import it. So you can ignore all these sound effects and stuff like that because that was for the intro, what y'all saw. So we're gonna go over here 
import those of you that don't know how to import and stuff like that i made a video on that um i'll probably put it on the top left or right i don't know where it goes but yeah uh, so y'all can watch that and then come back here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit import and then we're gonna find the um we're gonna find where we put the hyperlapses and remember we're gonna now we're gonna put the jpeg ones because it doesn't render the the raw photos so i'm gonna go to here and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the first one and then you're gonna hit image sequence and you're gonna hit open and then what it's gonna do is it's gonna make a sequence for you so now what you're gonna do is you're going to you really don't have to worry about the scale and position that's up to you but to make it look good so it's not so shaky like this is all we have to do guys literally all we have to do is we're gonna go to our effects panel um, which is somewhere depending on who you are uh, you're gonna get warp stabilizer and you're gonna apply it there and you're gonna let it do its thing so while we're while that's doing its thing I guess I'm just gonna be on my phone so yeah Alright, so it is done stabilizing and um, yeah, so let's check it out. <clears throat> it's probably going to be laggy. Okay, no, it's not. Sweet. So you'll notice the difference. It's a night and day difference, right? So literally, it's silky smooth, guys. It's the smoothest of silkies. Silkiness. Anyway, so if it wasn't smooth enough for you guys, there's, you know, edit the smoothness to 100%, 200%, whatever you want. It's gonna crop in though a lot, so just make sure you don't overdo it. And then, if you notice, it's like warping like really badly. What you can do is you can change this part right here, this, like that. Oh, well, there's two settings that you wanna change. This one, so you can do position or perspective. I would not recommend the rotation and scale because you Sorry guys, my camera has a 30 minute timer and I guess I talk too much. Anyway, um, there's three things that you can change, right? It's the result, which is a smooth, oh no, 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 it's the method. So like, how do you want it to stabilize? So you can do like sub uh, subspace warp, which is pretty much gonna do its best job. And it usually does a pretty good job as long as you shot the right way and stuff like that, how I told you guys previously. Um, and then position, if you really did a bad job of lining up the vertical thing, it'll kind of try to line it up for you, although it doesn't have any reference, so it doesn't know that you're trying to shoot a hyperlapse. That would be cool though if Premiere Pro like had a hyperlapse feature where they know like, you know, tendencies for hyperlapse. But yeah, um, this is also just one way to um, stabilize it. There's another method that I want to show you guys, but that'll probably be in part two if I ever make that video. So you let me know if you want me to see if you want to see that part two video. Well guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something new. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below if there's anything that I miss or if there's anything that you're still struggling on. I can definitely get back to you instantly. Um, that's the benefit of having a smaller channel is I can respond to everybody. Um, but yeah, hopefully you have a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Peace.